someone who will take you on a mystery's journey from all over the world. From all over the world. From the world. From the world. And how you guys doing? Welcome to the show. This is a special one. We're going to got Big O on from the Kazakh One Percenters. We're kind of doing it a little different today because we had some audio issues, but we figured it out, I hope. Uh, it's a real special show. Uh, seventh anniversary of what happened over at Twin Peaks in Waco. What a day, man. What a day. How you doing, yeah. Big O, man? Doing good, brother. Doing good, man. How you been? I've been doing good, man. It's been a long seven years. Holy cow. I'm telling you, man. Uh, it seems like it was fucking forever. And then, you know, seems like it was just yesterday, too. Uh, doesn't <laughs> it, man? That I remember that's how I kind of got my start in all this was covering Waco Twin Peaks. And it was like a roller coaster. <laughs> that whole damn thing and you were there you know all that went on and you know we know what the media put put out but you were actually there so why don't you give us a brief uh, rundown of it (laughs) well you know i'm not going to give you no details man um even this late in the game you know that's not how you do it but uh i'll tell you man uh uh that day changed a lot of things for a lot of people changed a lot of things in Texas, uh, changed a lot of, uh, the, you know, families, uh, there's the families of these guys, you know, uh, they're still hurting. And, um, uh, and you know, Texas is a different place since then, man. Uh, a lot of changes, some good, some not. Man, Texas has become like the profile and epicenter. Now it, it's got terrible down there from what mm-hmm. we're all hearing. Yeah, it sucks, man. Uh, law enforcement, they got these task force set up and, you know, they're after uh, uh, one percenters and bikers in general, man. Do you think that was a consequence of what happened over at Twin Peaks? Well, I, I'll be honest with you, man. Um, uh, we never had any problems with the cops around Waco until Twin Peaks. Um, uh, they never. State troopers were worse than anything, but the local cops really didn't fuck with anybody. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're not, you know, like Waco PD. Uh, they'll fuck with you uh, if you're doing something, but usually they'll just pass on by. Um, but the state troopers, the counties, man, they they're, they're all about it. Um, they'll bust you on you. They don't they don't need no probable, you know. Well, you know, I one thing I learned about Waco, uh, besides the 1990s with uh, that kind of law enforcement with uh, the Branch Davidians, is the cops down there, it's like they feel like they have a coblong pa- you know, pass on everything. They don't care about your rights or any of that type of stuff. And that kind of seemed like the mentality of the former district attorney, Abel Reyna, where he just filled out people's names and everybody was getting arrested. You know, man, uh, that was the worst mistake he made in his career, man. Um, uh, I don't know really what he was thinking, but you know, they made the same mistake in Houston with a bunch of street racers a couple years before that, rest of a hundred and some people, they had to let them all go. I mean, you know, you can't candy cut indictments on, on a hundred and some people. Everybody didn't do the same thing, man. That's just not how it works. Well, especially- and you know, uh, Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, especially I would say, since... you know, uh, on, on one hand, you know, it, it, it worked out great for everybody involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, luckily he bumbled it. Right. Well, he arrested, uh, what, over 177 people, and a lot of them didn't even have anything to do with what was going on, and he put them on a million-dollar bond. Exactly. It, it didn't matter if you were a three-time felon or never been in jail. Everybody got a million-dollars bond. I'll tell you, man, that's the scariest part. Seeing the eyes of some of them guys when they get hit with a million dollar bond. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't none of that other shit, nothing. Well, you see some of these motherfuckers' eyes when they hit a million dollar bond, boy. Like well, that, in the sky. That's really where you see who the men are and uh, who wish they were somewhere else <laughs> is when that million dollar bond comes down. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly, man. Well, the way but, you know that... they got they got they got uh, they after Twin Peaks, man, they uh, opened up three uh, gang task force centers, uh, one in uh, Houston, one in Tyler, and uh, I, I believe the other one's in Houston, but I could be mistaken. Um, so you know. They're all over shit, man. Well, they, they just they, got a club out here for organized crime, and it was really a simple bar fight. Um, they they're not gonna let up. I'll say that. Right. Well, those gang task force units. What a lot of people don't understand is when they set that type of stuff up, they have to show some kind of results to get their money in. I think it's just a big cash scam when they set that stuff up. I know the bondsman made a bunch of money. Big time on that one. Uh, what was it like having to sit in the joint or jail? I call it joint up here with people that actually weren't involved in this and seeing them worry about their families and stuff, how they were going to support them. Cause like you said, a lot of bad stuff came out of this. A lot of families lost a lot. And a lot of people don't understand that. Well, you know, uh, like I said a minute ago, I would say it jokingly, but uh, that really is the worst part, man. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's why you got to really know who you're fucking with. Because uh, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, um, you know, guys fall for the okie doke down there, especially the new new, new guys. Mm. youngsters never never been to jail you know how they do them oh yeah all your buddies in the next room giving you up man you might as well come clean yeah oh, the guy yeah. in the next room's telling them to fuck off you know <laughs> and he's in there falling for the fucking okie doke so you know luckily everybody kept their fucking mouth shut like they should have on all sides and uh the da didn't do a very good job so well that's something that is very rare is people learning how to shut up I always uh, try to suggest, you know what, name, birthday, social security number. I want my lawyer. I don't want to talk to you. I have nothing for you. And it seemed like a lot of the guys that day and even uh, some of the civilians and non-club uh, guys, they kept it quiet. And that was unbelievable. I couldn't believe yeah. that. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It was unbelievable. For that long uh, period of time, we're talking – Four years on fucking bond, I believe, or what was it? Three or four years on bond, mm. and uh, that's a long time, man. Unless you know or confident, you know, or been there, done that, you're that caliber of person, right? But you know, man, listen, it doesn't matter what you're in. There's always going to be somebody in there that really ain't what he's trying to portray to be. So, mm. you know, man, it's just the same old rule, man. Keep your circle close. Oh yeah. Small. oh yeah. What was it like those four years going back and forth with all that was going on with that crap? All the motions, all the appeals, those judges, those okie doke judges down there. I feel for you. I think we had some bad stuff in Chicago with judges. They're bad in Texas. It's like they all know each other and the prosecutors and all that. So it was really a roller coaster ride for you guys. Yeah, it was, man. I mean, for me, you know, I've been down three times, man. I've done many calendars at TDC. Um, I had a fucking lawyer that was out of this world, man. I mean, he was looking forward to going to court and kicking the fucking Waco DA's ass. And I was kind of <laughs> looking forward to seeing it. I didn't want to go to trial, but I was kind of looking forward to seeing that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, look at what uh, Casey Gautro did to them, man. Uh, you know, she was a pit bull, even though she worked with the other side. She was a pit bull in this whole thing. And she, yeah, she, yeah. she was disgusted so bad with how the DA and Waco and all that were acting. She actually gave it up. That's how bad it was. Yeah, you know, she looked a little twisted off in that trial. I don't know if you know her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know about you, man, but uh, hmm, the things I was thinking with her. Anyway, <laughs> all I know is I don't want to be your old man when, you know, pissing her off and stuff like that. But it. Uh, I hear she lost her license and shit. And uh, 
I don't, I don't know what what's going on. I ain't heard, heard nothing in a while, but uh, she quit paying her uh, some kind of dues or something. I heard whatever yeah. lawyer shit. Yeah, because she was so disgusted on what happened in Waco, the corruption that was uncovered in that was just it was insanity. And I think one of the biggest things people don't understand is how the cops acted in this whole damn deal. Uh, they knew there could be problems day before, you know, days before this, and they still let it go. It was like a special ops operation for them. And, you know, you were there, so correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just going after, you know, what I've learned from the stuff because I really stay on top of this. Popeye and OG, they really, from Texas Biker Radio, have really tried to put out what they did to everybody. But these cops were into it up to their neck. You know, do you believe that or not? Oh, well, look, man, uh, they had put up secret cameras on the on the telephone pole, the DPS did. And obviously they were uh, had it planned. They were had snipers on roofs and, and all kind of shit. The place was surrounded. Mm, right. It was surrounded. You you could see before everything popped out their positioning and stuff. Because one question I always had was up here when there was different clubs that didn't get along, the cops automatic, well, the first ones there stay, the other ones they push out. They wouldn't let nobody get near each other. It was like they were encouraging this whole thing from the start. Well, I don't know, man, uh, about that. Um, have you ever needed any encouragement <laughs> from a cop to do something? I mean, you know, th there's a lot more to the story about Waco. It, it, it didn't just pop up and happen that day. There was, you know, a lot of stuff leading up to it, man. Um, oh, it, yeah. It wasn't was. just a chance encounter that happened one day. Right. right. Uh, it was just one of those things that got a little out of control. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, man, it, it, it sucks, man. I, I hate it that, um, uh, you know, seeing brothers lose their lives, man. Um, well, you got on that but, talking about that. It was real pitiful that the cops knew people needed medical attention and wouldn't let it happen. And that's the stories I've, uh, heard from Richard. He passed away, uh, where, you had brothers laying on the ground and they wouldn't let no medical attention get to them. Yeah, they wouldn't, man. Uh, they were worried, worried about securing the scene, not getting shot. I mean, there's a lot of weapons out there. I'm not making no excuse. Believe me, man, I'm pissed off as a motherfucker. Uh, I was screaming for them cops, let the ambulance in. We had guys fucking bleeding out. Mm. And, uh, you know, so was uh, it? Matter of fact, uh, I remember the exact statement. The cop said, he said, well, you got yourself in a fucked up position, don't you? You know, they don't give a fuck. You know that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, according to some of the reports that uh, Popeye and OG from Texas Biker Radio and some others have said, four of the deaths were actually caused by the cops. Were they not? Yeah, four of our guys were shot by cop bullets. Yeah. And they had uh, AR-15s, everything, didn't they? Oh, man, they had sniper rifles. They, they had big guns, you know. And, uh, you know, the thing was, too, uh, you know, we had our backs to the building. And so we had the other guys uh, in front of us, and behind them was the cops. So the cops' targets only spotted our guys because our guys were the only ones facing that direction. So that's the excuse they uh, pretty much use is because uh... – uh, the ugly mans were facing towards them and right. It was right. A, Cause it looked like a Turkey shoot with these cops. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty fucked up, man. Um, uh, I know it's bringing back. Bad yeah, memories. I guess you, I guess you just had to be there, you know? Right. What did you think about all the news media? Because this thing went worldwide in a heartbeat. I thought they were a bunch of fucking idiots. Um, you know, we're sitting in a million dollars bond, and you see these clowns for the Waco PD 
uh, uh, whatever that, well, I can't remember his name. He was the one that public guy for them. Swanton, Swanton. Oh, yeah, Swanton. Yeah. This clown is on the news saying, you know, we don't know why this biker gang showed up uninvited. Last time I checked, COCs are open to all clubs and independents. No fucking invite needed. Hell, that motherfucking place was open to the public. So, right. you know, it was pissing me off that they were trying to spin that narrative. We didn't need a fucking invite. Well, that is true. A lot of the COCs are invite, you know, non-invite where you just come in, say hi, and it's a regional. Well, look, man, if any meeting. Joe off the street can walk in there, why the fuck can't we? Exactly. Exactly. And it's been said that everybody was trying to address some of the issues that happened before Twin Peaks, Waco. And that's where a COC you do it at. Am I correct in my thinking? You think so. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, there's always more to the story, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How long did they hold you before you were able to make bond? I was right at a month, man, before I could get them down. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you know, I'm three time felon, so they were trying to hold me. Right. But um, uh, they finally left. All they knew they couldn't fucking hold us in their million dollars bond. Mm -hmm. How was the judges to you guys with all your motions? You no, know, man. Uh, I, I only went to court one time. And it was just like a, the judge telling us, hey, we're putting you off some more. Um, I never had to do any of that. Wow. So this guy. Yeah, but they did keep me on a leg monitor for two fucking years. Oh, they had you on uh, the tracker, huh? Yeah. Did they? Uh... Thing, that thing was loose. <laughs> <laughs> did they put it to where all you had to do where you could go was work at home on the monitor i had like a curfew i believe like being by 10 or <laughs> <laughs> you need to loosen that thing up put it on a cat or a dog and watch them uh, run around and stuff hey look they just don't know i've been on many leg monitors before <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, that's funny stuff right there. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, it, it it's was funny when a whole pack of guys leave their monitors at home and show up at a clubhouse. That's even funnier. Oh, man, I bet. <laughs> For those that don't know who the – and I don't know how they don't know, but uh, Kazakh One Percenters, where did that come about and why did it come about? Because a lot of people are wondering <clears throat> really simple man you know those guys <clears throat> refused to back the guys that laid it on the line for them they had just over 60 guys facing fuck life in prison or more or less and um twice they threatened to take the whole area's patches because the national president time was just a fucking pussy to be honest with you and he was afraid of every mood we made out here after that. Mm. Uh, we couldn't get the them guys to even fucking ride out here after that. We had to fucking take the risk ourselves. And, uh, you know, threatening to take our patches, you're not going to do that but once. And when it happened a second time, we, we were prepared for it, man. Mm. And, you know, we felt like we were justified. Um, we laid it on the fucking line. And all them fucking guys in that other club, all them years of what they, they talked about. Oh, I'll do this. I'll do that. If this fucking happens, show up at the fucking clubhouse with your leg monitor at home. You can hear a fucking pin drop, you know, mm. um, fucking pussies. They fucking didn't. T they, their motto is they take care of their own. They're fucking liars. They don't take care of their own. They turn their fucking back on their own. And they got a long history of when there's problems, getting rid of the problem. Even if it means doing them wrong. Right. That's not brotherhood, man. Brotherhood is standing by your fucking brother for the long haul. Especially in a situation like that. See, you come from a time period that I could relate to. And it was a lot different where everybody was tighter. 
y'all if one goes down y'all went down if something happened you, you all were together with it and a lot of people don't understand that's kind of changed now and like you said when it comes down to putting boots on the ground you find out who's who exactly man and that's why you know uh quick you'll you, you'll pay for quick growth that club went through a lot of quick growth man and um you know it paid for it right it paid for it right what what led you to keep the the Kazakh's name but you know go with the one percenter well you know what we felt like we laid our fucking freedom and lives on the line for a club who turned their fucking back on us so we felt like we deserved that fucking name and those colors and we fucking took them mm. you took them and there really nobody came you know that kind of shows a lot of uh what you're talking I about i got buckets of their sh i got buckets of their shit they won't even come get it <laughs> well things have changed haven't they oh <laughs> they really have uh how tight is the brotherhood now that you were able to see who would stand with you. Does it make it tighter with the guys in the 1% Kazakhs than what you experienced? Oh, absolutely, man. Um, especially the guys that, you know, we're at Twin Peaks. They're in this club mm -hmm. that uh, put in work and years of experience, you know, years before Twin Peaks ever fucking was close to happening. Mm. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, man, like I said, you got to learn uh, uh, from your mistakes, and they made one too. Right. They made they made a mistake too. Listen, man, you put your fucking life on the line. You're facing fucking uh, uh, life in prison, and you're keeping your fucking mouth shut and sucking it up like fucking real motherfuckers. And your club can't even ride your town for you while you're locked down. Yeah, it's a sad state of affairs nowadays, man. They tell me I have to evolve all the time, but it's hard for me to evolve off of uh, the way a lot of people think and stuff like that. But circling back around, what did you think about all the problems they were having in this case as far as prosecution was concerned? Because there was only one trial, and that ended up, you know, they couldn't get nothing out of that stuff. So it was like, what, what, what were you people doing besides wasting taxpayers' money? <laughs> they were definitely ill-equipped for the job, luckily. Mm -hmm. Because, look, man, you know as well as I do, you could have just stood out there and not swung one fucking punch. And, but if they'd have got one conviction, they'd have come after everybody. Whether you were standing, fighting, shooting, they'd have treated everybody the same, man. Well, it was like, holy cow, man, you're prosecuting Christian clubs, you're prosecuting vet clubs, and you to see you by the videos that happened that day, it was like, man, everybody's running, but you're still trying to prosecute them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there was a bunch of people running. There was a lot of people there, man. Mm. Shocker that uh, only clubbers got hurt. What, well, let, let's talk about that. Do you feel because Twin Peaks is closed down now, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been a couple of different things since then, and none of the business, uh, uh, none of the businesses that try to make it there have made it, haven't made it since then. What was it like, uh, knowing that there were so many civilians in there and this was popping off? Man. Yeah, that wasn't even, you know, crossed my mind. It was a heat of the moment thing. I wasn't in there with the civilians, so, you know, I wasn't really thinking about that. Right. I guess you have to ask the guys who are hiding in there. What do you mean by hiding? <laughs> oh, big O. <laughs> That's why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, you were on the outside, but there was a lot of guys. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first time in a long time I got stumped right there. <laughs> hey, it's the truth, brother. 
It is. And how did that make, well, how did that make you feel guys, you know, that were hiding when brothers were supposed to stand with brothers? Man, you know, like I said, <laughs> it was a numbers game. They, a lot of quick growth and, uh, just, you know, uh, uh, a lot of guys, you know, that just really weren't about that life. Do you think that's what's hurting clubs now is this qu quick growth stuff? It's never good. You know, you got to have a get to know process. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to have home visits, make sure there's not badges hanging on the wall or pictures of cops. And shit. <laughs> right. You know, or when you meet a guy next week, he's wearing your, co your colors. It's, 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 uh, do you think that's not good? good. It, do you think that's kind of watered down the scene with that kind of stuff happening? Well, you know, um, uh, the door is just like kicked wide open in Texas. There's just, everybody's here and, uh, it's still the same biker pool, mm -hmm. you know, except for got new guys coming along. But, uh, so you got more clubs and the same people and it's always been on the scene and different clubs, you know, mm. same guys, different patches. They kind of like a rotating door or something like that. It can, but I've seen that in some, some, yeah. You know, <clears throat> sometimes loss is good. Sometimes there's good house cleaning needing done. Mm. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, I guess the best way to prevent that is to uh, bring them in the right way, slow. Right, right. Now, you Take your time. Now, Kazak 1%ers really opened up if you ask me, Texas, because Texas used to be held down pretty tough by uh, certain clubs and stuff. And now you're seeing a big uh, wide range of uh, clubs come in there. Oh yeah. Everybody, everybody's showing up and popping up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, man, I, I, I'll tell you, man, um, we've done nothing but welcome everybody with open arms in this state and uh we uh never try to restrict anybody we we, we live by stay in your lane and we'll stay in ours um you know friends are cool and everything but you know as well as i do you got a bunch of people that are friends four or five different clubs eventually uh, somebody's not going to get along and the little, those alliances like that sometimes don't last very long mm -hmm. so it's, it's just there's a lot going on, man. There's a lot of clubs and uh, a lot of alliance changing, uh, you know, uh, just people in general, you know, mm. uh, they're not happy in, in one club. They'll go to another. And it's been a lot of jumping around probably in the past year or so. And that's what's really concerning as I cover a lot of biker news. You actually, you know, if you're in the scene, you know what's actually happened behind the scenes when you're seeing these news reports. It's like you to pop a chapter here, you pop a chapter there. It's like, well, what happened to say the year hang around period for a chapter and then the year prospect for the chapter before you even let them patch? It's like all these people or these pop up type of clubs they're looking to grow to a worldwide type of organization like some of the bigger ones, but it took them like 50, 60 years to do that. It's like they right, want to do right. it overnight. <clears throat> you, you can't do it overnight. Not unless you want to end up in the federal penitentiary. Uh, you know, that quick growth means you probably got some LE in there, at least a fucking CI. Mm. I mean, and the problem with that is you could be doing nothing and they're going to twist what you're doing and saying anyway. Right. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a dog eat dog world, man. Well, yeah, uh, I was you know, once, I was once told by a great, uh, man, uh, I'm not going to bring up his name, uh, from an old club of mine that he said, and this is why I was uh perspective. He said, look around. He said for every three, there's one CI 
And that that really hit me. That really did. Would you agree with something like that for every three guys you're having at least one? I don't know about three, but I, w- I wouldn't put it past either. I mean, it really just depends on who you're fucking with, man, and how you came to be with them. Mm. Uh, I mean, the bigger the, the – the more guys you got, the more – chance of that happening obviously Mm, right and so even no matter how many numbers you got your personal circle still has to be small with with the brothers that you trust and have history with Mm -hmm. well as you get as you get more people the politics within clubs gets out of hand if you ask me it's like okay you're supposed to be brothers but you're trying to you know step over everyone to get a position yeah, I've seen many of that over the years, man. <clears throat> mm. uh, but, you know, the man makes a patch. Pats don't make a man. And certainly the rank doesn't either. Right. So if you're in it, you know, for uh, if the patch makes you and, 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 and all that, you know, you probably don't need it in the first place. Right. Uh, most of the guys that want that, to, want that uh, rank too bad probably gonna fuck and you abuse it <laughs> <laughs> do you think that you're street- because believe me if they know the job and they know what they gotta fucking do they won't want it <laughs> exactly do you think that your street experience really helped you out through life say that again do you think your street experience you know being on the streets being being where you've been really helps you uh, judge the character of somebody and be able to see something that others that haven't been through that can see. Oh, oh, absolutely, man. You know, you know, when you run across a new guy, he'll, he'll fall for every okie doke you give him. Um, and, and until they fall for it, uh, uh, if they're not schooled, right. Until they fall for it, they won't learn from it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, absolutely, man. Um, you know, everything now is just like everybody wants everything easy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, man, just the old ways are gone, man. It, it's not how it used to be, and it's not how it used to be before that. Well, did you ever – it's weird when you talk to some of these younger guys and they look at you cross-eyed when you talk a certain way or you talk about something in a way they don't like. And it's like, man, when did the political correctness hit the club scene? <laughs> right. Like, when what? did people start getting sensitive and fucking have feelings? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like they're more, they <laughs> invade everything. And it's like the clubs is clubs used to be where it was a tight knit group. You couldn't even buy support wear unless you were actually hanging around the clubhouse. But now you got the online stores. Everybody's wearing this and that. And I find it's actually the supporters that cause more trouble than the damn clubs. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, <how> the... <laughs> You're right about that. But, you know, man, uh, uh, depending on the people in your club... Uh... It really just depends, man. And, you know, you know, all the stuff I did, you know, in prison, uh, AC for all those years and then all the biker life years, um, nothing surprises me anymore, man. I, I've seen guys be fucking solid to the, to what they're about for, fuck, eight, you know, 10 years and just on the fucking turn of a dime, uh, you know, flip, flip it on you, man. Oh, yeah. And, uh. And it's just always like, where the fuck is this coming from? Especially when it's guys that you made, guys you brought up, guys you fucking schooled on everything they fucking know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they flip on a dime. Well, that's true, man. They always said, you know, five years, you know, maybe they'll stay a little uh, loyal to you. Ten years, you got to worry a little bit. If they're facing more than ten, they're out there freaking like a canary now. Yeah. Exactly, man. Exactly, and and the cops are making it easy for them. Mm-hmm. Sell out, to, sell them out, you know. And we'll do this for you. And man, people will fucking do it. 
Mm. Man, there, there's not the honor that there used to be. Uh, I mean, you fucking see it on the news every day. Bunch of fucking bullshit going on. The honor and all that. It, it that's that's a that's a dying breed of a uh, 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 way of thinking, man. It's basically um, there's a not a lot of, of those diehards left. The older guys uh, are, are that came up like that. Mm. Um, it's hard to. Um, it's hard to to find loyalty uh, these days, especially in the younger generation. I don't think they understand the concept of loyalty yet. A lot of them. There's some that I've met that are fucking solid hardcore, but you can always still see the inexperience, you know. Mm. And uh, man, you know you gotta. You can either fucking learn and be the best at what you're about, or you can just fucking fly on your heels, man. Probably not make it. Right. What do you think, you know, because you've been in the joint and stuff like that. What do you think about guys that are wearing the diamond patch who will puff their chest out and sit there and want to get the glory of the club patch? But then when it's time to pay the piper after they knew the game they were getting into. And that's one thing I never understood. If you're in the game, you knew what you were signing up for. Why are you going to turn and take other people down with you? What do you think about them type of people? They never had the diamond in their heart then. Right, exactly. And they never should have got it. You should get, you, I mean, you know that patches like that are earned. Mm -hmm. Right. Turned by time, blood, mm -hmm. sweat, tears, and it... You know, one thing that upsets me the most is when the pop-up clubs, everybody knows the pop-up clubs, but they'll just sit there and just slap it on them. Oh, I'm on one percenter. Okay. What did you do? What did you do for it? Do you know what people have done to get their diamonds? That drives me absolutely crazy. Or when they can't speak to it, they can't tell you what their club's about or what their diamond's about or, or you know, mm -hmm. how they earned it. Well, Why that, it means so much to them? Well, when they get mud checked, that's the funniest thing around is when they get checked and it's like, well, wait a second. Yeah, you might have, you know, five guys or six guys and somebody who's real comes up on you and it's like, damn, man, why did I put that diamond? On? It, it, they don't understand it. Actually, some bigger 1% clubs have stopped uh, even putting them on because it's uh, lost a lot of meaning. Yeah, it really, it really has, man. Mm -hmm. It has. What do you think your your learning experience was from Twin Peaks? I probably can't comment on that and actually give you an honest answer. Mm -hmm. So hard lessons. Was it hard for you guys to get jobs after that? Oh, yeah. There were a lot of people who couldn't get jobs, but hell, uh, I, me and Shane, hell, we quit more jobs than we lost for clubbing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so you're living this lifestyle 24-7. <laughs> yeah. Phone rings, there at work. It's time to go. Either you let me punch in in the morning or not, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an old attitude that a lot of people don't, you know, understand anymore. It was a 24-7 type of lifestyle, and you had to do what you had to do to get by. But it was the brotherhood first, and that's something you don't see much anymore. You're right, brother. You're right, man. I remember my one club. You know, we all lived in the same apartment <laughs> complex. It was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it just comes down to schooling, man, and that's a lot of work. I mean, a lot of guys, they don't want to put in that schooling part, you know. It's easy if you know it. Mm. It's easy to, you know come down on the guys when they fuck up, but what'd you do to prevent them from fucking up? Mm -hmm. What'd you teach them? Did you school them? You know, if there's a guy wearing your cut and can't fucking even tell you what his club's about or where it came from or, or anything else, mm -hmm. you did a piss poor job of schooling. Right. right. Really, uh, a club's history is, is vital, man. It's important. It knows where you, where you came from, where you, where you started from. Mm-hmm. 
Do you think we had it uh, good because we got to learn from uh, the Vietnam vets? We had a different teacher. Well, yeah, we had uh, old school guys coming in, uh, coming up, man. You know, old school guys, serious business. Real serious. They, they didn't guys. take care. They didn't take care of their battles on fucking Facebook. You know, social right. media wars. It was all hands on. Absolutely. Just like back in uh, high school and junior high, buddy. <laughs> you get it on after school, you get it on. Yeah, if something uh, <laughs> happens, you weren't sitting there signing a contract with these teachers. No, you went out and did <laughs> your stuff. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think I have such respect for the Vietnam Air guys is they really showed us what it was all about. It wasn't for people that weren't men it was a man's business this game you're right man you're right and now it's uh it's a whole new game mm -hmm. what freaks me out and i'm think i'm i'm sure you know you do we came from a generation where women were on the back of a the bike they shut up and <laughs> you're laughing you know what i'm talking about <laughs> now it's like you got a lot of guys out there oh well i gotta go to a valentine's dinner or i got this or that and it's like what the hell is wrong with you <laughs> i know man <laughs> i know it <laughs> it's fucking funny it's so funny because i've seen it so many years uh you know, a lot I've of seen it for so many years, and we used to tell them guys, man, look, your old lady might wear the pants at home, but when you get here, you better fucking put on a show, motherfucker. And have <laughs> <pants> <laughs> it, 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 it was, it, it's kind of weird trying to get used to that type of thinking, it really is because you look at them, you, you know, I came from the 90s there. And you look at the new guys and it's like, dude, what the hell? You know what? Grab your balls out of your, per you know, your old lady's purse and put them back on. <laughs> you know, I don't know how many hate emails I get from suppose uh, bikers that say, well, you stepped over the line when you said that, you know, I'm supposed to respect my old lady. Well, the respect goes to that man first because you know what? The man's a man. And if right. you can't be a damn man, then you don't need to be around. <laughs> you deserve That's everything. It. That's you what the get. MC stands for, man's club. Right. And when you have an old, uh, that's one thing that always, you know, the old lady, you know, they go home, she puts stuff in his ear, and that's when stuff gets, you know, started. Yeah. <laughs> A lot of people don't understand a lot of club wars that started over broads. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of internal shits happened because uh, uh, a dude to dump his old lady, and next thing you know, she's with another bro. Right. And then here we go. She knows everything about the other bro. Mm -hmm. And here we go, you know. Well, he, you know, his uh, pecker size ain't as, you know, big. You know, she really gets in and <laughs> deep, man. She gets on that. <laughs> It never works, man. No, it doesn't. <laughs> you, and that's where a lot of problems do start out. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that was some funny. <laughs> you imagine that, though, man? Your brother going home, he looking at you the next day saying, oh, man, I hear you don't got shit between your legs, man. I heard you don't know how to do that. <laughs> No wonder you're getting you slapping the shit out of them. <laughs> I tell you, man, old ladies can be an asset to your club. You know, if they have the mentality of, uh, you know, uh, in our club, the ladies have been around and know how we want things and how we do things. They, they wear a certain tab that, that points out that they know how the fuck we want it done. Mm -hmm. And when these guys roll up, you know, with their flavor of the week, they, you know, they try to keep them girls from getting their ass fucking kicked by schooling them. While. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah. them women fight more than the men do some night. Well, hell yeah, dude. You'd be in a bar, man. They'll grab a pool uh, cue with you. A good one. <laughs> yeah. 
they'll get out there and whoop some ass, you know, but at the same point, they need to understand, well, you're a woman. That's the way this shit is. And I think a lot yeah, of, you know, and that's, and that's the thing, man, you know, uh, they shouldn't start shit at any club related function. Um, and that, that's, that's what the older, uh, the, the women that have been around, uh, longer, you try to prevent with the newer ones, you know, like, look, you can't do this fucking shit or you can't do that. Or this is how you do this. Otherwise you're labeled to fucking not like the consequences, right. you know, well, I, but yeah. it's a good thing, man, because you know, they sit, they do a lot that, that we don't want to fuck with. You know, mm. this past weekend we had the Memorial. I mean, they did all the uh, decorating for everything and the food and just all the shit mm -hmm. that we don't want to have to fuck with. They're knocking out for us and have no problem doing it. Right. And so there's some good old ladies out there. And, and, and as long as they follow the rules and, you know, got their man and the club, the man, their man's back mm -hmm. and, you know, then it's good. But, um, you know, I know guys that need to put vel have Velcro coming with their old lady passes. <laughs> that way they can just pull this motherfuckers off easy every other week, you know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it used to be where you, you really didn't hand out them. Uh, pro well, I don't know if you guys use property patches, but there was rules around that type of stuff. You either had to be engaged, married, whatever. But you weren't just giving those to anybody because they can cause all kinds of shit. Right, right. It's a learning process for everybody, man. Uh, when coming into a club, you know that uh, uh, the guys hanging around and learning process, and the women too. It's mm. all a learning process. And, and what sucks, man, is you know you you bring people in and you teach them the way of things and everything, and and, and you know next thing you know they flip on a dime. Mm. So, you know you it, it it it's probably why a lot of these new people don't get schooled like they used to. Because I'm sure there's plenty of people out there sick and tired of schooling guys, and right. they don't work, mm -hmm. or they, they don't take, you know? Right. Well, it, what's funny is I got blessed. I had an old lady that was kick-ass. I wouldn't bring her around the club because that was my damn time. She knew the way it was. If I'm going out there getting a blowjob or doing this or that, she knew it. She accepted it. She knew what I was about, what the club life was about. And there's a lot of, it's hard to find that kind of woman. Yeah. It sure is. <laughs> He's got his old lady looking in front of me. You ain't doing that. Are you? <laughs> I was about to wait and see if someone's going to fly across that studio. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the way we thought back then, man. You know, now I'll, right. now I'll post a nude of a broad on the internet and you got guys that come back and say, well, I got an old lady. I don't need that. It's like, bullshit if she's on your knees at the clubhouse you know damn well your zipper's coming down <laughs> and if it don't i'm gonna worry if you're in the closet <laughs> <laughs> it is man that's, good shit. that's the way everybody got down <laughs> But now it's like you try to screw around with people and it's like, man, you got a you know, piece of coal up there. When's my diamond coming out? <laughs> yeah, you got a piece of coal up there. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, man, uh, uh, it, it's definitely a different world. And uh, man, I guess. People have new way definitions for that diamond now, man. Well, that it does. I mean, uh, everybody's not uh, um, really truly understanding what it, where it came from and mm -hmm. what it's about. Well, you know, Andrea in the chat puts, it's hard to let it happen. Women have fa feelers. The, the problem is my generation let the women know what was up. We didn't have to go and hide who we were like you, you know you have a, a guy a brother out nowadays oh man keep it quiet it's like dude what do you mean keep it quiet we're <laughs> brothers i don't have you don't have to tell me that but on the same point why don't you just tell your women what's up you know <laughs> i sit here i pay the bills i'm taking care of you i'm going out and getting a ball job it's not hard <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, everybody's different, I guess. <laughs> Especially women. I, I, I ain't never figured them out. Well, I've been with my ever. old lady for almost 20 years, and I still ain't figured her out either. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Billy says, agree, club business stays in the clubhouse. My old lady doesn't even go anywhere when it involves the club. That's the way it was with my old lady. But at the same time, is she knew. You know, there was no reason for me to hide it. And I think that's what's lacking in a lot of people these days is don't hide who you are. If you're going to live the life, live the life and don't be embarrassed about it. Don't lie about it. Let your old lady know, man. Yeah, you're right, man. Uh, uh, you definitely got to be on the same page with your old lady on a lot of things that makes your life a lot better or, you know, get a new old lady. Um, <laughs> if you're going to have an old lady in this life, She's got to be one that works with you, not against you. Uh, otherwise, you probably won't make it. Right. Uh, Geo says, Hollywood going to get husbands divorced telling their wives they've gone off for a BJ. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? That's why I believe I be, you know what? I'm a big believer now in the blow and go. Just blow it and go and sign a prenup or, you know what, lease that stuff now. Don't, you know what? Don't buy it. It costs you too much money. You lease that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how you lease it. <laughs> well, you know what I mean? You don't get married. Don't put a, don't put a, you know. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thing. I got you. I got you. You lease that stuff. <laughs> and Andrea agrees. See, a lot of the older women our age understand. Well, yeah, that's the problem now. I told my old man to just tell you, tell me, see, I'm leading a movement here already. Just, I hey mean, I think I just found that fucking volume button we were looking for earlier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 52 <laughs> minutes into the interview. <laughs> yeah. Mark says, who's this guy don't want to lose his bank account. His 401's in jeopardy <laughs> now. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Just be honest, man. That's all. And you know what? That's the way it is. I don't know, man. That's how I learned it from the Vietnam vets, man. They had fun. Oh, God, the fun that they had, man, running around orgies and stuff like that. Hey, kind of life. <laughs> 60s and 70s, man. It Everybody was, was naked back then. Hell, yeah. It was free <laughs> love and rock and roll back then. <laughs> I wish I could have grew up in the 60s, man. I'd have had my pecker doing a helicopter all day. Well, everybody was fucked up back then, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, writer Jitsu uh, Hollywood asked him his thoughts on leadership and what it means to be a leader. Well, you know, man... Uh... <laughs> That's a real long answer, but I can I can sum it up like this. Don't just give a fuck about yourself. Give a fuck about the very last man. Not to this top, guys. All the way to the bottom. You truly give a shit. Don't think anybody's expendable. Mm -hmm. Don't ever tell anybody to do anything you wouldn't fucking do. Mm -hmm. Don't say, go do it. Say, let's go do it. Right. Uh, lead by example. That's Treat your brothers right, man. You be the living example of brotherhood. You know, a lot of times people have a hard time. They think, oh, man, I got to take a leave of absence or, or I can't be in the club because I'm having this problem, that problem. That's when you need your fucking brothers the most. It's when you're having a fucking problem. I don't care what you do or how you do it. You need help? I'm there for you. Just don't lie about it. Mm. You know, number one, number one rule is don't lie to a brother. Don't lie. Tell the fucking truth. You ain't got to lie to your brother. No matter how fucked up it is. Mm. And if you're honest, you, there's nothing you can't get from me. Yeah, you're supposed to be there and not lie, man. That's what. It, there's a lot of uh, non-truth tellers out there now. Uh, a lot of people that make things uh, that it really isn't. That's perfect to say in that right there. Hey, Andrea, if you're 22, send me a picture, man. We might be able to get together. What's up, Mojo? <laughs> <laughs> rock and roll oh uh, hold on <laughs> uh jamel rogers 
tell big old respects from Mojo. Yeah, yeah, I know him really well, really well. Oh, okay, cool. He's cool. a good guy, good guy, man. Fucking A, man, fucking A. Uh, hold on a second here. We might have... Sos, your camera's not on. Um, working on it. Wait, it says it's on. You know Sos, right, Big O? Demons I don't Row. know. Demons Row? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, admit your sins to set you free. That's from News Now. Uh, Andrea, oh, no, no, no. Oh, come on. Help Hollywood out here. I haven't been with the 22-year-old in freaking 20 years. Come on. <laughs> I'm dating someone. Well, I just need to borrow you for a freaking couple days. That's all. Then, you know, maybe Big O will help out there. You know, it happens. There he is. So it's the ghost is. Oh, yeah, high. yeah. All right. Yeah. How's it going? How you doing? Oh, I don't see you guys. All right. There it goes. I apologize, man. I had a, a situation with my bike when they pulled it off the. Um, nice to meet you, too, Big O. Apologies, Hollywood. Apologies to the whole nation out there, the whole culture. I apologize. But um, I had a situation where they were pulling my bike off the trailer. The dude had this, you know, the skinny, skinny ramp. He missed it a little bit, and now I have fishtails. So he fucked up one of the fishtails. It was a whole thing. So I apologize for that. I was just I came from the shop and I had a long ride back from the shop. I'd be pissed, man. I'd be beating your ass. <laughs> yeah, they had insurance though. So. Oh uh, okay. Well, yeah. so this is Big O. He was uh, at Twin Peaks Waco. Uh, we're at the seven year anniversary uh, of that craziness that happened. And you're on, man. Go ahead. So, like, what's the temperature out there now? Is it is it always that aura of like something bad, you know, something bad could happen, or is it like is that way in the past, or you know, what is it like out there right now? Oh, well, I guess it depends on what club you're in. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of clubs here now, and everybody don't necessarily get along. So. Uh, you know, kind of depending on where you're at and who you are, it depends on what you know how hot it is in Texas. So, is it like a ghost town now that, like, since whatever happened over there, do people stay away from that area? Like, is it ghosts over there, or is it like still a a popular place where people go to hang uh, Waco? out? Yeah, like where the whole situation happened. Uh, there's other clubs here, man, and uh, of course we've we've been here for many years. Um, uh, it's it's actually growing, man. Actually, uh, you see a lot of bikes, a lot of clubs out here. I don't know that any actually, uh, other than uh, other than two clubs, I know for sure that are actually have a chapter in this town. Um, it'd probably be just us three, and all three are one percent. Okay. As far as I know, out of Waco. So I I never been out to Texas. So what's what's the scene like out there? Like what's going on with you? And you know, I I don't know where where um you know Hollywood went with it. But were you just talking about Waco, or were, were they getting into like your life and and you know about you and stuff like that? Yeah, hey, we talked about Waco and club stuff. Um, you know, uh, my son Shane was one of the seven that died on our side, and um. Um, his wife and my grandkids, which were his kids, uh, we all live together. Um, so, you know, I, I see the pain every day and, um, where a lot of people, you know, probably then forgot about it or, or wasn't affected as much, you know, the people that actually lost somebody are is, a, and is around like for me, you know, uh, there is no break from that. You yeah. see it every day. You, we we got the pictures of him, and we talk about him, and he's there every day, you know. Yeah. So, um, taking care of, uh, you know, taking care of our family, and uh, man, I'll tell you what, man, they've grown in the last seven years to be uh, great kids, and um, their, their dad would be real proud of them. 
uh, you know, there's some other moms and, and family, uh, uh, the other guys that, that, uh, got killed, uh, you know, they're still hurting too, man. Uh, uh, my wife, you know, she lost her son, her firstborn, and, uh, she'll never be over it, you know? Yeah. Uh, days like today is like the worst days. Um, um, you know, it, it, it it's no different than any other death. It hurts. Um, but at the same time, you know, this has a huge story around it. You know, yeah. this is not just a simple, somebody was killed. This, this is a lot bigger and more uh, detailed than that. And, you know, um, we're doing a uh, great, uh, we want for nothing. Um, but you know, uh, that don't replace their dad. Yeah. So, I'm sorry you know, for your loss, man. It, 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 yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you can answer this question, but you said it was deeper than that. Is this, does it have to do with the border and stuff like that? Like way bigger stuff, or is this just, you know, like street level biker, you know, you know, politics yeah, street level, you know, leading up didn't did, things didn't just start at Twin Peaks, you know, I mean, didn't just have a coincidence happen one day. I mean, obviously there's more to the story. Yeah. You know? What was and, the, was it a miracle to you that all, all that happened and nobody ratted like, cause people rat for the smallest yeah, stuff yeah, and yeah, all man. those people got I was caught. Totally shocked. Totally shocked. I, I was telling him earlier, man, you know, uh, I've been down three times, man. I've done 11 calendars. Um, uh, there was guys in there that never seen a fucking jail. And you could tell by the way they look. And I'll yeah. tell you, man, that was the only scary part about it. Was seeing the looks in some of them guys' eyes. Yeah. Um, but you know, man, uh, 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 on the flip side of that, um, they kept their mouth shut. Everybody did, and uh, everybody's free. Yeah, um, that's amazing to me. Is it is that like the only time that ever happened in history, Hollywood, where like oh, somebody yeah. didn't rat when they were throwing, you know, where big numbers could get thrown out? Oh yeah. <laughs> well, we cover it all the time, me and you, man. With guys doing it, hell, you had the national uh, P and the national VP go down because of the national sergeant at arms down in Texas. So it. Oh you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you're looking at uh, over 177 people and they all shut. What do you think is because there was media spotlight? So if anybody ratted, it would have been so publicized that they would have been like. I, well, that, but I think it was more uh, on, on every side. Uh, um, probably keeping your mouth shut was the safest route. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's amazing to me that that many people got caught in. Still to this day, I think about that. Yeah. Like, yeah, me it's, too. It's, it's a learning lesson, though, to everybody that you know what I mean. If everybody keeps their mouth shut, you know. But um, with the with the temperature now, where all these clubs letting so many people in, and all of these, I believe a lot of feds and stuff like that getting in the clubs. I never forget what that dude Finger said that had that channel. That every club that ever had like a case or something like that has an implant in it somewhere you know some you know a lot of these big national clubs so the fact that like right right nobody's talking you know it's, it's amazing to me sometimes i think they keep a lot of the drama going to those those implants you know oh absolutely man they encourage the shit they encourage guys to do shit you know and uh and flip the script on you uh you know that that's why i say man that quick growth is not the way yeah. You, you gotta I don't care if we take one member in a year. Uh get the no process, man. You can't get around that. Yeah. You can't because you're gonna end up sitting behind bars for the rest of your life yeah. when you're just moving too fast, you know? Yeah. So do you think like like clubs are gonna bring it back to the old school way and really like, you know, slow it down? Because I see just rapid growth, like everybody wants numbers quick. So I like I, I feel like the clubs that kind of take it slow are the ones that are like gonna last. But a lot of these clubs are just bringing anybody home that'll leave and you know another club and join. 
you're you're right it happens every day <clears throat> you know um i think uh i think there needs to be a uh, understanding again in the whole biker community about that yeah the whole rule of not going anywhere else is just out the window you know yeah sure and then it's flavor of the month you know you got guys oh man look this club's you know here now let's go try this out and, and they're just yeah. accepted and then you know they don't like it there and they try the next flavor of the month and shit man uh they got three uh uh, uh three of those gang task force in texas now one here in waco one in tyler i can't remember the other one i believe it's in houston but uh man they're working man yeah These feds and locals they're working and uh Man, it's, you got to really watch your ass these days because you don't really have to be doing anything for them to twist you up into something. Yeah. And especially if they got somebody working, you know, uh, a CI or, or a plant, they're going to twist it against you because that's what they're getting paid to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely would like to sit down with you and really do a, a, a full, like, interview, you know, like, definitely um do my homework and just you know i gotta do hollywood too we gotta i want to go to chicago though and and like you know but we could do it on the zoom anyway though but hollywood always gives everybody love interviews everybody so i want to interview hollywood put hollywood on the hot seat <laughs> hell yeah yeah i'm down for watching that man <laughs> get my get my info from hollywood man we'll plug up yeah yeah definitely definitely so oh, by the um, way, we got that Cubs game that uh where you got to get a hold of Carlos, man. We're already arranging it. <laughs> yeah, he already said that it was gonna go down. So um go ahead. Let's... I had to go for a while, hit it. Yeah, um, so what's going on, like events, stuff like that? You got anything going on out there? I'm about to go like, to yeah, man. We just had a uh, memorial run last Saturday, man, and uh, we released a thousand balloons over there at the old Twin Peaks and had a party and stuff after. Uh, and we got something coming up in a couple of months. We got a new national clubhouse we're putting together here in Waco, so uh, we should have that done very soon. And uh, we plan on having a big uh, blowout when we hope kick it off. Okay, what kind of bike you ride? Uh, fat boy, fat boy. Okay, I got the soft tail, I just got it hooked up, so I'm super hype right now. Yeah. I'm going down yeah, to Myrtle Beach. It's soft tail, but oh yeah. Like are, you going, <laughs> are you guys? <laughs> are you guys going to Sturgis? I don't know, man. Uh, you know, uh, uh, some, the guy who's a national president now. Uh, he was at Twin Peaks with us. Um, we uh, we're, we're putting together a schedule of events this year, and uh, we're not quite done with it. But uh, oh, okay. this month or so, uh, I'll have some more uh, uh, info on that. Yeah. We should set up something where we go out to Texas and, like, you know, get them in their element. That'd be dope, Hollywood, if we was out there with them, you know, in their element, you know. I've been I know down them for years, man. Oh, man. We've known each other for <laughs> years, what, seven years since this all started. Yeah. yeah. I got a party with you guys down there. It's beautiful down there. I heard right now why we get all the fucking snow. Yeah. <laughs> but we can arrange that so so we can get down there. I'll just get a hold of uh big O. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah I want to do more outside stuff. Um are you out, you got any plans to go to do you ever went to Myrtle Beach? I'm going for the first time this year. No, but I did go to uh, Virginia Beach last July. Oh, okay. Okay, I never been out there. Same day they legalized same day they legalized marijuana, July first. <laughs> <laughs> they still haven't. Uh, well, no, this is Texas we're talking about. You'll never get it legalized there. Nah, man, I'm telling you, man, the feds can fucking legalize it, and Texas won't. <laughs> well, you got to go over to Brownsville, man. Pick some good stuff up. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 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 yeah man so well um just let me know and we'll we'll, yeah, man, we'll, uh, we'll uh, keep you posted on uh when we're gonna open that clubhouse and uh shit man maybe we can work something out yeah Hell yeah yeah where would, where, I would love would, to visit. where would we fly into 
There's actually a little airport here in Waco. I don't know uh, about the flights, but uh, Dallas, if not, it'd be Dallas. Well, we can always have Wild on Two fly us down there. <laughs> if yeah, I keep forgetting he's a pilot. Oh, yeah, they, he, he, uh, Voodoo said you can fly from Dallas to Waco. So. Oh, okay. So you, cool. You'd be right here in town, yeah. How yeah. far are you from the Mexico border? Oh, shit, we're in the center of Texas. Center, so it's far, right? Yeah, it's, it's hours and hours. Hours and hours? Oh, okay. So you yeah. do you don't feel that influx there heavy? You know, where all the stuff going on with the border oh, stuff yeah. and all that? Oh, yeah, man. Are you talking about the border, the border stuff going on on the border? What'd you say? You're talking about stuff going on on the border? Yeah. You know, man, uh, it's... I'll just say this, man. Um... I just ain't even going to get into politics. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're big political I guys. I the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> we're big political guys. Trust me. Uh, you guys you know, are like... Man, I just feel like uh, if you're the biggest... Supposed to be the biggest, baddest country in the world, you should have some secure fucking borders. That's all yeah. I'm saying. I'm not saying do anything with anybody. I'm just saying what nation don't secure their borders? I don't get that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm like kind of tapped out from the ride. I gotta um, definitely um, link up with you and get some questions together and really like you know get into you as a you know because I don't know what Hollywood asked before, so I don't want to reiterate this the same stuff. Oh yeah, we'll get them together. Yeah, that's all good. Yeah, we'll, we'll plug up, man. We'll, we'll we'll chat it up and we'll put something together. Yeah, yeah, wow. definitely, definitely. Well, there you, there you go, guys, that uh, Sosa be uh, interviewing Big O, and uh, that would be coming to you as soon as they hook it up. But I know, uh, Big O, you've been on for a while and stuff like that, and uh, you're probably looking out there to go get a blowjob or something, aren't you, by now? <laughs> <laughs> and tell, oh, yeah. Vo and tell Voodoo yeah. I said hi, man. A uh, good deal, man. It was great talking to you, Hollywood. Great meeting you and talking to you. Uh, look forward to a uh, uh, further chat with you. And, uh, man, look forward to see you guys, man. That's yeah, awesome, we'll man. Go up. You got to yeah, have definitely. me blonde when I come home over there, man. <laughs> got to give me a blonde. I don't care if she's a rat trap, pass around, whatever, but a blonde. <laughs> man, you, if you survive the night. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, right, fellas. Right, Good guys. talk, right, man. Yeah. Appreciate you letting me come on. Hey, right, yo. I'll talk to you. All right, y'all. Have a great one. <laughs> oh, so man. What's going on, Hollywood? Not much, man. I'd be pissed off, man, if they did that shit. Yeah, man. I'm... But there was insurance on it, so. Oh, that's that was, was that him clicking off? Yeah. Oh, okay. It, yeah. You had a kick ass paint job just done and all that stuff, and that happens. Yeah, no. But it didn't mess up any of the paint or whatever, but he just messed up the fishtail a little bit. Oh, okay. people uh, I see people apologizing, and people that turned on me. Did you did you get any of that when we like squashed oh, everything? All the time, man. All yeah. the time. You know, that was one thing, dude. I like getting that quashed and we're having a good time now. Uh yeah. you'll be coming out to Chicago and now we can get down to Waco. So that's yeah. a part of yeah. these guys. You know, all yeah. of them, are a lot of the older guys and stuff. Yeah, we'll have a party. <laughs> you, ever, you ever went to Myrtle Beach? Nah, I haven't been to Myrtle, man. I've been yeah, to Daytona. Yeah, I want to check that out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm going um, tomorrow, the day after. Oh, yeah? You didn't yeah. get any interviews going? Huh? You got any interviews going down there? Or are you just going to walk um, around? I'm actually going to I'm actually gonna interview my mentor, um, Chief, who, like, taught me everything. I thought I knew a lot, and then when I met him, I realized like I didn't know anything, because he's he came from that from that sixteen um Thunderguard tree from that direction. Oh, okay. So yeah, so he I learned so much from him. Um, I don't know if you ever seen some of the videos that I had up before, but he was just like giving pep talks and stuff. He's just real, like an inspirational type dude. So I'm gonna sit down with him. Maybe we could um. Oh, uh, maybe we could go. Um, maybe I could bring you because I gotta go live. Um, 
on Friday and um maybe we could do maybe we could do this but I'll be out there you know like oh, at man, Myrtle Beach yeah. and then we could do like a live like that like I'll bring you on my live but I just don't know how to use the um I got to learn this restream thing cuz it's pretty cool you you got like a lot that you do with it I've been using the OBS so I don't I got to learn you know right right well, it's actually easier using uh restream it don't kill your computer on memory and you can invite people in just give them a link run it from your browser you did a lot of stuff with this yeah i want to learn how to like uh because you had it i i did it the day we went live the first time i mm. tried to go on youtube it wouldn't work but we were like live on my twitter and live on my instagram right so, yeah so it's kind of cool that you could do all that so i want to learn about that did you get on true social man they just opened it up to everybody no because i'm on MAGA hub because i oh. have android i don't think it's on i think it's only on apple no they yeah. just want the uh, android now oh yeah and you to do it on the computer too oh that's what's up yeah so you know i'm <laughs> in there <laughs> what do you think about what's going on in the border man and what do you think about this 40 billion dollars that they're sending over there why we don't have baby formula would you would you say the the baby formula yeah we don't have baby formula nothing like that going on here man everything with the supply shortage i don't know man it's just um i don't know about this baby formula thing like i don't know about this i i feel like i know one thing that i know bill gates is buying up all the crops in the midwest and all that like all these farms and stuff so mm. i know he like He's like he's like hoarding stuff, you know. I don't know right. if it's him or what it is, but if I get too deep into my mental pattern, then they're gonna like <laughs> demonetize you. <laughs> oh, it's already been demonetized, man. We just went all off on this damn show. <laughs> oh, you did? You went crazy? Oh, we went well, yeah. You know, this one is real close to a lot of people. Uh, this is basically how I got my start was covering uh Twin Peaks. And oh, it was, okay. it, it was, it's biker history. Uh, went th what everybody went through the 177 that was arrested, uh, big O and stuff. He lost his son there, uh, chains, uh, the cops killed four. It was like a Turkey shoot there. Yeah. And, you know, once you, you know, get a big O on and get to do your interview with them, you'll be able to learn a whole ton of stuff man yeah uh, the older guys is what has always taught me and i still learn man i i still learn yeah. so he's a good guy he really is it's uh, funny and, uh, both of our starts are similar because you started with the waco i started with the save the patch that was my yeah. first video yeah i had same. like two videos where we were just like at an annual or whatever and a regular like at an event or something and then when i started demons Row tv it was the first episode was the save the patch case oh yeah and that's in the ninth circuit right now uh there's been some motions filed and stuff that i can't talk about here on the air yeah. uh but uh hopefully that comes out and they, they get that rico charge dropped against them we'll see yeah but you also got uh you know your patch that you're wearing right now you mm -hmm. need to tell everybody about that man yeah man i'm just on a unification tip like um and like i said before it's not like if you're in a club and you feel like you know you don't want to war with another club you could be down with it if you but I, it's this is more focused on like independent and like people that just you know just falling under the same banner like we all rock together you know that's all it basically is you know more right. of a symbol of like you know and and i want it to be a symbol of like not like a corny like everybody hold hands more like we're all men we're all women and we we understand what's going on in the country right now and if we're not together somehow we're gonna fall you know like is there's so much going on it makes us so weak like i don't know like i look at the people that say like oh unification that's weak people can't you know it'll never happen but i look at them like the people in australia that will be wearing a sharpie over their diamond because they're so tough they can't unify with their own people but um when the cops come they're gonna they're gonna put a marker over their diamond so it's like 
you be tough in the way you think is, you know, whatever you think is better. You know what I mean? Like, I got mm -hmm. love for everybody, but I am i don't want to live like that, you know? I, that's fake to me, like, you know? If you really mm -hmm. so diamond and so 1%, then rep it in front of the police. And if they don't like it, take what comes with it, you know? But when, <laughs> you know, like, the way it is in Australia right now is rough. It's rough, oh, it's nasty in Australia, man. It's basically like Texas down there now. Yeah, yeah. You know, that bandito got pulled over just for going to school. Uh, he had a legal CC, uh, well, a gun permit, and they still charged him. Yeah. They got no Second Amendment, bro. That's why without that second, you, there's no first, there's no nothing. Got that right, man. You yeah. damn right. But cool, man. Well, we're yeah. going to get together and stuff. We'll talk. I got to get you uh, big O stuff. And yeah. it's it's amazing to hear somebody from somebody that was on the ground after all that stuff. Yeah. And I really do feel for him. He's gave a lot of blood to his club, literally, uh, with himself in that day and his son dying and yeah. going through what them people went through. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. I got a gift tomorrow. I'm reviewing the video uh that you did about the um I, I review the video that you already reviewed. So I'm reviewing the review. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that schmuck with the angels patch. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm reviewing your clip of the, <laughs> the review. <laughs> and that's the thing. A lot of these people don't understand, uh, especially supporters that a lot of guys in the club bled for this stuff. They're sitting yeah. in prison for this and it's just not right. So we look forward to that. What else you got going on? Not much. I mean, well, a lot of stuff. Like I um for the next couple of days I'll be in Myrtle, but then I have like I'm trying to build up my second channel, the Souls to Ghost channel, because I have an album that's been done. Well, I call it an EP because it's only eight tracks. I don't want to call it an album unless it's like a on a record label or something like that. But um I just it's just it's not about I'm not doing it to be like to make to to be like super famous or super rich or whatever for me everything is legacy so i want certain things that when i'm gone i did it you know what i mean like i want the music thing i'm getting i'm doing nfts um do you know about that at all and oh yeah NF nfts yeah. and stuff like that for uh the virtual world yeah yeah so I'm you know what actually that. the metaverse is our future man it's yeah. the future yeah so I want to tap into that a little bit because I think that the future, um, people are going to be using the NFT for money. It's going to represent money, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, I think in the future, like people that like, it's like now, like, you know, people that have like coupons or whatever, and they'll go into like Fridays or something and they'll just scan their phone or whatever. I think that in the future, like you could have like, let's say like there's a Hollywood NFT and we throw a big biker event. If you, whoever cop whoever bought that that hollywood nft when they come into the front of a big party like we all have a big party and we're all there and um you know they come to the front they could scan their hollywood nft and get into mm -hmm. to the event you know what i mean like i think it's going to be like that in the future oh cryptocurrency is the way to go especially the way this damn country is going right now yeah I, i'm actually invested in crypto man so that's dope <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. what you, so are you are you investing in just the crypto or are you into the nft stuff or like how uh, i do, do the it? nfts i do uh crypto i do ethereum and uh bitcoin and i like dog coin too a uh, dogecoin yeah yeah you know what that's um i think dogecoin is elon musk for yeah that's that stuff. yeah anything that with is. him is money like you're damn right it is <laughs> same bet did you see have you have you paid attention to Twitter? Oh yeah. <laughs> you see oh, all yeah. the you see all the wolves coming back out? Oh Alex hell Jones yeah. is on there. Like I think I think Trump is reinstated too. I don't know if he's if he jumped back on, but I saw Alex Jones. You know he was banned for a long time. You know Alex oh, Jones, yeah. right? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he was banned oh, for a long Lord. time. I saw him in um I saw him when I went to the MAGA march. He, uh, he's a funny dude. He really is. Like, <laughs> yeah, people love that dude. People uh, love him. He's funny. Chris bust the rhyme. So, <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait till it comes out, man. That's going to be uh, when you get in your podcast going. Oh, man. Mike is all the way in, in um, California. I'm over here so busy. Like, 
we got to connect the dots on it. Like it's going to be, it's going to, it's going to take some time, you know, right? because of the fact that he's out there, you know? So I don't know, like I'm going to, I'm going to drop the, I'm going to drop the solo project and then I'll start thinking about that. But we already had like three episodes done. Once we get it rolling, I'll get you on it. Right. You can get on it whenever you want to. Awesome. Is this, is this actually your podcast too? Yeah, this is, see, that's the uh, one thing, uh, YouTube ain't my main uh, platform. Yeah, I knew it, I knew that. Yeah, everything I do is for the the show for the podcast. So, how do you like the podcast world? Do you just is YouTube just secondary? Like, I know you just said that, but like in your YouTube, mind, is it just like YouTube's is it just the a video hobby. to the audio? It's just a hobby, the YouTube for me. Oh, okay. It, radio is my passion my the podcast my passion you know we wrote up the podcast to one of the top one percent in uh, the world nice I'm, I'm sponsored by spotify and a couple other ones nice. so uh, i'm a radio guy i always been that's why my video sucks you're the king <laughs> of the stuff man <laughs> i'm just learning how to use a green screen for christ's sakes but you but know you, radio, you oh, move like you drop like every day how often do you drop like do you have a number or do you drop every day or like we're like daily it. uh monday through friday uh oh, okay. first, what you see on youtube is only the first segment uh then we wow. go into the second segment our podcasts are like an hour and a half a day with me and china now and the second half we talk about all kinds of shit you know from politics to this fuck up it's crazy wow Yo, so you you're a beast, Hollywood. That's a lot of work, bro. <laughs> Did I you get three a week and it's rough? You doing <laughs> five a day? Yeah, I mean, five a week. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> People don't even know how much like work you have to put in to make all that happen. Like, well, they don't know insane. how much equipment that you have to ha get. Me, everybody has to get. We put some money into this stuff. Yeah. And you know, where you go with your video and, you know, hopefully you get like a Taz cam. That way all your calls get better and stuff. You feed right through that Taz cam. I do need to get that. It's I like, do two bucks, man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> wait, that's, that's what, the cam for the, wait, that's for the, for the audio. Yeah. For the audio where you can get uh, stuff like this. <laughs> sweepers, sweepers, everything, man. That's what big O was just on was, uh, the radio telephone line oh, and, it goes, okay. and it goes through the TAS cam and you to hear everything. Oh, I got to look into that. I got to oh, look oh, into I that. Gave the link to it. So, yeah. So but, what's been going on with you, Hollywood? Just working man, like crazy. Just working, man. Just getting yeah. around now, man. It's gotten real nice out and shit. So, yeah. But looking forward to that Cubs game, man. Carlos getting it set up. We're going to rent a house yeah. up and stuff. Yeah, let's do it. I, I I'm down. I have some ideas. Like, I wanna um, I wanna shoot your interview, and I wanna I'm gonna slice it into a couple of different pies and a couple of different videos because I have some ideas. You know, kind of like what I did with um with um with Jimbo. I I kind of I want to do more of that though, like that style where like it's. I think it'll be good for all of us to do it, but kind of like you know how like Joe Rogan to do like a long podcast and then he'll oh, clip yeah. it he'll clip it into different videos or whatever. I want to do that and like touch different, you know, subjects or whatever, turn it into a couple of different videos, you know, teach us about the Chicago, you know, biker scene, like what do you, you know, what you see out there, the experiences, because right. all worlds are so different, you know, oh, you got that right. Uh, you know, yeah. I, love that. Uh, you know what, we'll take you to the Cubs game, but you're taking us to a Yankees game. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> I actually, if we, I actually uh, have a friend, that is head of security and when we go inside yankee stadium he tells us buy the cheapest tickets and then call him and then he brings us to like a vip area i literally i kid you not hollywood i met j-lo and a-rod he brought oh, us to the, yeah. to the owner suite one time when we met them j-lo was a sweetheart a-rod was a dick he didn't want to take a picture with us but i have uh, it on my instagram we took a picture with j-lo <laughs> she was nice she yeah had. yeah a-rod <laughs> After all those years, when I was locked up, 
I used to always, the Dominicans used to always laugh at me because they used to say, um, a rods up. He's about to strike out. Cause it was always like a bases loaded situation. I'm like, yo, he's about to get a hit right now. And like, they used to get on me and he used to strike out like every clutch moment. So it was that dude should have at least took a picture with me for all the time. <laughs> I had to defend them. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Polly, we're going to take them to Harry Carey's and a couple other. Uh, we're going to take them over to the Sears Tower, North Pier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oak Street Beach. And, you know, we might uh, throw them down and let him and Carlos walk down Clark Street. But, you know, what happens there, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> It's just what? like Blue Oysters is what I'm going to tell you from the, the police academy, the Blue Oyster Bar. That's what you get when you go down Clark Street. <laughs> the Blue Oyster Boy? I'm Blue Oyster what? Blue Oyster Bar where they're, you know, they, they dress up like bikers there. <laughs> oh, okay. It's one of them areas, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's one of, uh, they wear butterfly wings, men, and uh, if you get my drift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so yeah, where would I bring you in New York? All right. So if I if you when you come to New York, I would bring you to I would bring you to the to Yankee Stadium, of course. And then in the Bronx, there's a I would bring you to City Island. And what City Island is, it's a it's a it's a strip and it's all seafood. And like it's kind of like a swap meet, not a swap meet, but like all right, so you're by the water. And they sell like all these drinks that like you can't get anywhere but there. And they have like seafood and people outside. And they have like um, they'll have like an Escalade with like Lamborghini doors and people have their bikes out there. But it's not like a club atmosphere. It's more like family, but people hang out there. But it's the only place in the Bronx that I can honestly say like everybody goes there to have a good time. I never heard no bullshit go down there. And, you know, it's like always something going on in the Bronx, you know, and right. that area all my life, never heard nothing bad happen over there. It's just it's a good vibe on that. I would definitely bring you there and then bring yep. you to Manhattan. You've been to Manhattan before? No, nah, man, I haven't been to New York. I do want some good Italian food from the Bronx. Oh, Brooklyn. yeah. I got to take you to Little Italy, <laughs> Little Italy in the Bronx. You will love that. You'd be right with your people over there. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> Well, see so yeah, at Yankee Stadium. New York isn't what it used to be, though. It's like, I don't know if this happened in Chicago, but like, let me tell me if this happened in Chicago. Like, New York, like, if I would have took you to like Fordham Road back in the days, it would be like all these clothes stores and stuff, and you would see clothes, and it would be all these brands you never heard of, but cool mm -hmm. stuff. And you'd be like, oh, I like this, or I like that. And you would like grab all this stuff. But now it's like Dunkin' Donuts, Subways. Uh -huh. You know, oh, did that happen in Chicago? Damn right it did. Uh, Maxwell Street used to be the best in uh, the country. That's gone now in a new location. It's just not the same anymore in the city. Uh, I hate to hear that, man, because I would have wanted to experience, like, Chicago, Chicago, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be taking you all over the place, man. We're going to be having yeah. some So <laughs> it's going to be a badass time. We got to, oh, we got to take you on the circle line. <laughs> <laughs> oh and i'll take you on the freaking subway over here the l we call it you'll have fun <laughs> oh you have a subway is it is it like the subway in new york where it's like it's tough oh yeah you'll love it <laughs> we'll, yeah we'll, we'll me and danny have some pieces on us <laughs> that's what i can tell you <laughs> why don't you and danny do a video over there show me what it looks like yeah we can we'll go down you there should, like yeah show so we got to show people like how we grew up and stuff like that you know like more into us you know right i'll take you yeah. down the taylor street that's where all my relatives from italy uh immigrated to i still got family down there uh take you down the cicero all the good stuff oh okay definitely man i'm looking forward to that yeah, um when was he talking about june or august august it was yeah. yeah yeah danny we'll take them to the west side <laughs> i wouldn't want to i wouldn't want to like wait so long like we we could do that like because that's like the end of the summer like well he wants to see the marlins the, the marlins. marlins yeah he's from miami and shit so he wants to see the marlins but we can all get together and talk about it but the marlins wouldn't play the cubs unless they were in the world series because in the american league no, oh, no, they, wait. oh florida Marlins. i'm thinking of the yeah, Tampa Bay oh, Devil Rays. 
have Florida yeah. Marlins. So, so he wants yeah. to see the Florida Marlins take on the Cubs. He, he, he thinks he's got a uh, you know the balls to wear Florida Marlins in the middle of the freaking uh, Cubs and the bleachers. Yeah. That's <laughs> so what do you? How do you? How do you feel if the Yankees are playing the Cubs? Like, do you feel like whoever wins a- them on, on both sides or like? Well, yeah, because uh, you know the National League Cubbies are mine, and the Yankees are uh, mine on the. The Yankees had so many historical players because I love baseball. Uh, they had them all. And Yankees are my American League team. No, I can't stand the fucking Sox. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I hear yeah. there's a real rivalry with that, too, like with the Sox and the Cubs out there. South side, north side, man. I'm a north sider. Yeah. You'll see the difference when we take you. It was yeah. soon as the Eisenhower is the dividing line. You'll see how it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we'll take you down uh, to Humble Park and stuff like that. Get some good Puerto Rican food. The best in the oh, country. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's so, what. Oh, so you've had. So you've tasted Puerto Rican food then. Because that's something oh, I would want you to taste too. I grew, I grew up. Uh, what was it? Uh, I grew up in Monticello. Uh, it had to be like 10, 15 minutes down the road in city traffic. So I was oh, out okay. there at the time and humbled. Oh, okay. All right. So Chicago has a lot of like New York kind of vibes, the Italians, the Puerto Ricans. That's kind yeah, of like New Italian, York. Puerto Ricans, Greeks, Chinatown. We got them all here. Yeah. We got a good culture going on. Yeah. So um, I'm going to get off this because I got to eat some right. dinner. I've been running around since six in the morning. Rock on, man. We'll get together. I'll get you big old stuff and all the good stuff. Yeah. I'm going to drop that video tomorrow, which, you know, reviewing the, the video you did. Rock and roll, man. Well, you have a good Thank night you, and brother. all that good stuff. Have a good night, my brother. All right, man. Talk to you. And that's the show, everyone. Hopefully, you guys uh, got to learn a little bit about Waco and the history behind Waco. Seven years later, my God, has it been a long time. Uh, a lot of hurt people still out there trying to recover from what that uh, DA put everybody through. Learn about it. Learn about it is what I can say. Anyway, guys, we'll talk to you later. Rock on, man.